have a Mother Mary or the Mother Earth or, or uh, five intercessors in between you and God because they don't want you to have a relationship with the living God. They don't want you to know you, you are God's son or God's daughter. No, you, you, you're a servant, and we're not servants, but we are living children of the living God. So it's an identification, he's saying. Right? So long as Jesus is this guy on the picture on the wall, we're separated. God says they have no images of me. We all look at that cross or that crucifix with Jesus, and we say, that's Jesus. Is it? How can you look at me and say, I look like Jesus? You have never seen Jesus. You have been deceived. That's the thing. You got to understand, he's not a picture on the wall. We can all go into any picture of any place and say, that's Jesus. Why? Here he says this. That's not Jesus. Jesus is the living spirit that lives in you. And that's an excuse for us not to love each other. No, I love this guy holding on this stick here, and he's a dead man, and he's just a piece of iron and gold and, and metal on his wood, and, and that's who we love. That's who we love. What about me? I don't know you. I know that guy hanging, on, hanging right there, that piece of wood. That's the guy we love. Hanging on the piece of wood. What about me? I don't know you. I love the guy hanging on the tree. I don't know you. And I don't want to know you. Love him. But the living God lives in me. What about me? I don't want to know you. The stick is my God. He's a living spirit. And he lives in all men. As long as God's over there laying on a stick... That's your God, made by your hands. Your hands. Not the hand of God, who makes his house stand on the rock. And the rock ain't Peter, the rock is Jesus Christ and faith in him. Let's read the prayer. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, according to Tsiganath, or whoever that may be. Oh, Lord, I have heard the report of you and your work, O oh Lord, I do fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Tiam, Temen, and the holy mountain of Paran. His splendor covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. Rays flashing from his hand. Right? Jesus says, I'll come like a bolt of lightning. And every eye from east to west shall see him. Like a bolt of lightning. Right? We don't go to another room. We don't need to go seeking Jesus. Right? All them Amish people, are they out there, whoa, seeking, looking, whoa, or questioning their faith, questioning anything? No, why? Because as though in the bolt of lightning in the east to the west, everyone see Jesus. That's the thing. And every eye shall see the Son of God. I know this truth because he lives in you. He lives in me. See? <laughs> see? Now, he says, brightness was like rays flashing from his hand. And there he revealed his power. Before he went, before him went pestilence. Right? Before him, in front of him, is pestilence. And plague followed at his heels. Right? Now we go to the book of Revelations, four horsemen. Again, the wrath of God is going to be rained out. Right? He stood and measured the earth. Go to the book of Revelations. And all this, yeah, he gave John a measuring rod and measure the outer court. The outer court. Measure the earth. Wow, it's too big. I can't measure it. Inner court. Heaven, Zion, God's kingdom. God lives and Jesus Christ is in the inner court. Zion, heaven. 
hands him a measuring rod. John, John, go measure the outer court. But don't, don't, don't measure that out part where the Gentiles are. Right? Fulfillment. What has Jesus fulfilled? What is he going to do for us? Okay, before he comes to save us, this is what follows. This, this is how we know Jesus Christ is coming to save us. Okay. Okay, ready? One day when we see pestilence, Jesus says, okay, you know when winter's coming, right? We all know when winter's coming. Trees start turning brown, beautiful colors, smell in the air, temperature drops. We know when winter's coming, right? Okay, before Jesus comes, you better pray this doesn't come in the winter. Pestilence. Like, like the trees begin to turn, uh, the, the green leaves be turn red. Okay, and then pestilence. Okay, and after that, after they start turning a little red, plague. Then they kind of get all brown and crusty and then they begin to die and go to fall off the tree. Uh oh, winter's coming. When the first leaf fell, plague. All right, now followed out his heels. And he stood and measured the earth. And he looked, and, and he looked and shook the nations. Right? Are you, you feel shaken? Are you worried uh, Iran's going to come drop the nuke on you? Are you a little fearful that, that you could kiss your daughter tonight and, and not see her tomorrow? Let us eat our last supper in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Every night, love one another as though it is your last day. Be ready. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His were the everlasting ways. I saw the tents of cushion in affliction. The curtains of the land, Midian, did trouble, did tremble. Your wrath was against the rivers, O Lord. Was your anger against the rivers? Right? Or your indignation against the sea? When you rode on your horses, on your horses, right? God's in control of all four horses. They're in Revelations. When you rode on your horses, on your chariot of salvation? Is this a chariot of salvation? Plague, pestilence, murder, uh, war. Is this the plan of salvation? <laughs> Is this the plan of salvation? You coming down on your fiery chariot and what? You strip the sheath from your bow calling for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and withered. The raging water swept on. The deep gave forth to forth its voice. It lifted its hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their place. Remember in the book of Revelation, the sun and the moon's not going to give no sunshine? at the light of your arrows as they sped. At the flash of your glittering spears, you marched through the earth in fury. You thrashed the nations in anger. You went out for your salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. Right? You crushed the head of the house of the wicked laying him bare from, from thigh to neck. You pierced, you pierced his, with his own arrows the head of his warriors. You came like a whirlwind to scatter me, rejoicing as if to devour the poor in secret. You trampled the sea with your horses, the surging of mighty waters, I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones. 
My legs tremble beneath me, yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon people who invade us. Yet I will quietly wait right, for the day of trouble. Here we are today in our world, right? but yet I will quietly wait for this day of trouble, whatever it is, whatever it is, Paul says, neither the devil, neither the forces of evil, nothing seen, nothing unseen, nothing from the imagination of a man can take us away from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. Right? That's the thing. God gave you a great gift. Stewardship. Jesus says, okay, I forgive you of all your sins. And now I chose you to forgive them of their sins. Okay? So we all may be one body in Christ. And God may save everyone. And that's why God told you to be the forgiving spirit on this earth. To forgive them for their sins. What if he chose them? There's no forgiveness in their body, but he chose you. How glorious is that, to be a part of that forgiveness? You're like, oh man, I don't want to forgive those guys. Oh, okay. Well, I will forgive you and those guys. You lose, and God wins. Period. Period. And we must love one another. And you say, well, there's a lot of people going to hell, and it's a hard path to get to hell. When Jesus says, this is what, this is what's going to come, you say, yeah, but there's this fiery pool of hell and fire. Okay, this is how sweet and awesome and strong your faith is. Don't worry. <laughs> you have nothing to be afraid of. Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach, you know, right? Azariah, Hananiah, those guys, they, they, they walk through the fire. Whose fire? Ebenezer's fire. The Chaldeans' fire. And there was not a hair on their head was harmed. Why? Because the Son of God was with them. He was with them. Nothing will happen. Not even smoke. Right? That's what God says. You burn off that dross. I'm going to burn off everything that I hate, right, right, that's the thing, that bowl and those 12, and those arrows, and the 12 arrows, you know, you got 12 arrows, there's this guy with a bow, and he don't have no arrows, because, you know, it's queerer, it's the 12 disciples, the 12 foundations, the 12 witnesses of what, Jesus Christ came in the flesh, he has come in the flesh, he is here on earth with us each and every day. He walks with the men. He walks with us. He talks with us. Sometimes he carries us wherever we need to go. Death, famine, war, a fiery pool of hell. What's going to keep us from God? Jesus says, nothing. See, I have done it. It's finished. Nothing. He rose in body, full body. Okay, incorruptible body. And we're a part of that body. And he said, see, I did it. It's done. And he said, no way. And he says, Thomas, come here and stick your hand in my side. See that big old wound? But I'm uncorruptible. I, I can't die. I'm forever more. See? And this, this, you're like in here. You're a part of me. Everyone who has me has the Father. And everyone who has the Father has Jesus. Jesus being living in you, you now have Father. Father, God. Don't need an intercessor between us and God. We have him himself. Right? Those, those arrows, ah, Cupid, right? Hey, Cupid, the guy who had no arrows. Because he always shot out love. Love. Boom. Right? 
don't shoot out fiery darts. He shoots out love. And all them love, them darts of love are like fire. Yeah, he baptizes in fire and in spirit. Right? First thing you're going to see before he comes is the fire. And then you can say, well, I don't know. All the people on earth there in Nebuchadnezzar's day said, oh, there's the fire. And everybody said, we're going to bow down to the fire. Bow down to the fire. Right? Because we were more afraid of being thrown into the fire than we are to worship this idol. Okay? So we're going to bow down to the fear of the fire. Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach say, we don't bow down to it. We have no fear of the fire because the fire is God our Father. In fact, if you throw us in there, you're going to be doing us a favor. Surely, surely, God will deliver us out of your hand. Right? Oh, Father in heaven, deliver us from the evil one. Not those evil ones. The evil one. Fear of the fire. That one. That one. We're not afraid of the fire. We know that fire is God. God comes in fire. Truth and spirit. Inside the fire, they saw the spirit of the living God. And they were not hurt. What? You mean we get to go like Moses and talk to God and not be consumed by the fire? That's his grace and mercy. That's his grace and mercy. He says, Yet I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon the people who invade us. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, the produce of the olive tree of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fall, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in God, the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on high places. Right? That's the thing. God puts all his wrath and anger into sin. Sin is anything that destroys the temple of God, God's house. We are God's house. We are God's temple. So God, because he loves you, the spirit living in his temple, more than the, the, the hate and the anger of the stuff, he takes everything, pestilence, the stuff, and everything, that's sin. Whatever kills, steals, or destroys the temple of God, and he takes whatever steals, kills, or destroys the temple of God, and he takes and he throws that in the fire. Well, while all that stuff is in the fire being melted away, all of a sudden there you can see one standing there, likened unto the Son of God. Right? It's you. <laughs> That's the thing. He says, see, he did all this for you. For you were once dead without hope. But our hope is that if all that stuff comes, it's because we are his children. And he's coming for us to deliver us from all that stuff. And that's his grace and mercy. You say, what, how much, how giant is that grace? It's eternal. Once we get to there, never again ever. It, it's God's reigning love. God's reigning joy to the fullest. You, you couldn't ex pull in more joy than you have because it's to the fullest. Always. Always. And, and you can't consume it. It's so full in you. It's impossible to be jealous of what they got because you're 
full. Full. And they are full. Full. And full. And full to the fullest. How long does that last? It has no end. That's God and the holiness of it. And it out, doesn't that outweigh? And you say, well, how do I get there? God has put you there already. You need more, eight, two or more gathered together in his name. And there he is. It's his witness to this world that says, you are my son and you're coming with. And the evidence is any of these things attack you, it's because you're my kid. So that you can stand on the rock and prove to this world and everything that causes death. My faith has overcome all these things. And my faith was given to me by Jesus Christ, the one and only living God. That's who will save you. And you know how I will know as you? Because you're going to have a different kind of love than the rest of the world has. You have the love of Jesus Christ living in you. See you next time.